I do have a few reminders about titrations and staining conditions that I want to go through. Mainly, you definitely want to titrate your antibodies. I know that people often shortcut this, but remember that as your panel grows larger, it's much, much more important that you titrate your antibodies. Um, I just talked about all of the spreading issues. You can see that if for this particular antibody, if I used it at the manufacturer's recommended amount, I would get something like this. Whereas if I titrate it down, everything just looks so much nicer, less spreading. Um, it's really going to help you out to get the best possible results if you titrate your antibodies. It also helps with resolution, so you can see for the IgD, if I titrate this down, I can see a very nice clean population, but if I use too much antibody, I lose resolution and I essentially see spreading of the negative population. So definitely titrate that down. Um, you can use antibodies that were titrated on a different instrument. I would just test the antibody that you're used to using and make sure that it's not too bright on the Aurora. But otherwise, I would think you should be okay using antibodies that you've already titrated. The only one, like I said, is the Live Dead really does need to be titrated on the instrument. Uh, so this is the recommended concentration from BioLegend. They recommend one microliter in 100 microliters of PBS. Um, it's on scale, but when you actually look at the raw data, this population contains the zombie near IR signature. Whereas if you titrate this down, now here you can see it looks much more negative. There's a lot less of that zombie near IR binding to the live cells. So you're going to get way better results if you use a much lower concentration as opposed to using a higher concentration like this. Um, so this just explains that again. Uh, I did an experiment where I created a control like this. So there's a difference between how you titrate the live dead dye and how you make a control for the live dead dye. So for titration, you need to make sure that you're staining cells with a mixture of live and dead cells so that you can figure out at what point do, are your live cells not picking up so much of the live dead dye. So here, for example, you can see that these cells look like they're still picking up some of that zombie near IR, and so going to a lower concentration would be better. Whereas for the reference control, the best way to make that would be to kill cells, stain them with zombie near IR, and then right before you add them in, spike in unstained cells. But if you do this when you're titrating, then it's going to be a bit harder to figure out where that point is, where you can see that the live cells are still staining with the dye versus the live cells seem to be staining with little to no zombie near IR. Another note about BB515 specifically. Um, so this was shown in the SciTech user group meeting. It was discovered that if you only do one wash after you stain with BB515, these are different titrations, one wash causes this weird spreading, um, whereas if you do two to three washes, then it looks much, much cleaner in the negative population. So um, that does not occur in Fitzy. So keep in mind, if you have BB515 in your panel, then you should do at least two washes after you've stained your antibody. And then another thing to keep in mind is the polymer stain buffer. So some of the fluorophores are made with polymers, mainly the brilliant violet dyes, the UV dyes, so the BUV dyes, um, the BB dyes like BB700, BB515, and the super bright dyes. Those are all made with polymers. And for whatever reason, those polymers have a tendency to stick together and create some unusual populations. So you can see without the buffer, we're getting these extra populations or it looks like the sample isn't unmixed properly because the fluorophores are interacting with each other. So BD 
created the Brilliant Violet Stain Buffer and then Thermo Fisher with their Super Brights. They also have a Super Bright Stain Buffer. I've tried to ask around to see if these are equivalent. I kind of got mixed uh, answers, but I think you could probably just get by with using one of them. With Cytex default panel, they have a lot of Brilliant Violets, but only one Super Bright, so they go with the Brilliant Stain Buffer. Um, definitely you want to add that to the tube and then add your antibodies after you've added the stain buffer. If you mix all of your antibodies together in a master mix and then add the polymer stain buffer, that sort of defeats the purpose because your antibodies have already had the chance to stick together. You also don't need the stain buffer if you're doing reference controls because you only have one antibody in the tube. So you only need the buffer when you're mixing multiple fluorophores together. Um, and SciTech also tried to see if titrating down would help, but they still got these sticky, weird populations. So definitely use the stain buffer. I have heard reports from my users that they saw a drastic improvement in their data, even though on the conventional cytometers, a lot of people get by without using the staining buffer. A few other considerations, if you are doing a large panel and if you are using human antibodies, which have a tendency to come at five microliters per test, although you should definitely titrate that yourself. Um, but you may find that you end up with more than 100 microliters of antibodies. So if you are running, or if you are trying to do a 24 color panel, then you might have to keep in mind that your staining volume needs to be a little bit more to accommodate the volume of antibody. And then also, this was brought up in the SciTech user group meeting, you can get aggregates in your antibodies. And so one way to get um, rid of these aggregates is to centrifuge your antibodies. So it was recommended 10,000 RPM for three minutes before you use your antibodies and then just pipette off the top. Um, you can see that these aggregates go right. This will just sort of mess up your data and not, it won't really look nice. Um, they also suggested filtering their antibodies, but I kind of think realistically, I don't see very many researchers doing that. So at least centrifuge your antibodies, be aware of your aggregates.